So thank you everybody for joining. We will be starting exactly in one minute. And uh, I know Max will kick it off for us. We're just waiting for more people to dial into our workshop today. Uh, already we have, um, you know, team members dialing from, from different locations in Canada and hopefully the US very soon. And also there is different industries that we can see who are dialing into our webinar today. We really appreciate everybody dialing in. Looking forward to learning more from you, your business as well, and your expertise. Uh, this is going to be an engaging session. So while, while everybody is uh, preparing themselves, feel free to ask us questions. Uh, um, the panelists will be presenting, but also will be moderating questions in the Q&A. Uh, I won't be uh, managing the PowerPoint, so. You want to ask me a question? I'll get to it at the end, guys. <laughs> Shall we get started? I think so. Let's do it. All right. Well, welcome everybody uh, to our webinar. Here, when selling through distance, I'm Max, and I'm part of the team here presenting from Flawless Inbound. Uh, really quickly, getting into things, a lot of clear faces, uh, but they to us. Uh, who are we? Flawless Inbound, we are a revenue growth partner that uh, helps organizations out at three levels of business, sales, marketing, and services. We do this in the HubSpot tool, which we are a platinum partner for. We're the only Canadian organization to hold the HubSpot Advanced Implementation Certification. And here are a few of the things that we specialize. Again, you'll all be getting these slides uh, after the presentation is done. You can look at that another time. So introducing your presenters. Joining us from we have an growth consultant. We have John Robbins. John, say hi to everyone. Hey guys, good morning, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. And also looking after the Alberta region is uh, the voice that you've been listening to so far, Max, located here in Edmonton, Alberta. And lastly, we have our chief revenue officer also located in Edmonton, Alberta, the man himself, Sahar Gaddis. <laughs> Sahar, say hi to everyone. Hi everyone, we're looking forward to engage, having a good engagement with you guys today and hopefully adding a lot of value. It should awesome. be like now, on the lower left corner, <laughs> yeah the, the <laughs> defender <laughs> yeah well john that's uh you, you've you've set me up nicely here because um as we all know there's um uh, a lot of news out there you know whether it's um what's going on in the united states right now um regarding george floyd or whether it's COVID 19 still a relevant issue but we want to focus on some happy news right now and uh, the big news right now is that hockey is coming back so uh, all us Canadians on the call right now are, are super excited. Uh, Americans who might be on the call right now have just validated Canadian stereo stereotypes for you. But just wanted you all to know that nobody is more excited right now than Sahar. And he really just wants <laughs> to show me this. This is actually the unedited version of this picture. It is. Uh, it looks like Photoshop. Let me tell you, it's not. So moving right along. Just the agenda, so we're, we're right in the introduction right now, and uh, pretty soon I'm going to be handing it over uh, for some opening remarks by John and Sahar. Uh, John is going to go really deep into uh, really the topic of this webinar is removing friction between sales and marketing departments. Uh, Sahar will talk about how a customer-centric model uh, reduces friction, and John and I will give some examples on that. I'll pass it over for some closing remarks by Sahar, and then we will open the chat up for uh, question and answers. Just to let you all know, we are uh, letting you, uh, we have the chat open right now and you are able to ask us any questions. Uh, if they're topical and relevant with what part we're at in the presentation, uh, we will answer them right then and there. Uh, uh, or if we're, uh, we're running a little late, we might table them for the very end. So please at any time, if something comes up, put it in the chat and uh, one of us will try, try our best to get to it. So uh, from here, I'm gonna pass it on to Sahar. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Max, for this uh, exciting introduction and uh, scary introduction at the same time. Uh, I just wanna say one thing, thanks everybody for joining today. 
uh, what I really like about today is that we have diverse industries actually dialing to our webinar. So, so really the expertise from this webinar will actually come from the audience as well. The reason why we're hosting this webinar in this special time is that now we understand we are kind of having very interesting times. We're dealing with COVID and there will be a new world uh, after COVID. We know that. And everybody joining the call today, my expectation that they are either a sales rep or a sales leader in an organization. So you have specific KPIs that you still need to report to, even though you have kind of outside situation that you cannot control. So this is kind of a good segue for us to kind of start our workshop. We want to introduce to you a framework called the flywheel framework. The flywheel framework is mainly designed to help you bring back focus to your sales organization, the sales team inside the organization, where we want to still put the customer in the center of everything we are doing, regardless of the outside environment and what's going on outside. So we want to enhance, optimize, and bring back mastery into sales. While we're doing that, we understand that usually your growth departments will be sales, marketing, and hopefully the delivery team who are delivering on the product and service that you promised your client for. But while doing that, I want you to think about the flywheel again, that it's spinning in a way that you focus on the client. And as you can see, there is an arrow up. When the arrow up represents that we want to increase the spinning. And how can we do that as sales leader, as inside sales rep, or maybe account executives, is how can we add force to the sales process? Now, I know when I say add force, it's a little bit aggressive. It's non-Canadian. And I don't mean it this way. Actually, what I meant to say here is how can you add value? And you know what? This Today, I'm going to not use the word empathy in our, in our workshop. And I'll tell you why. Because everybody speaks about empathy. We get it, we understand that. But I want to add the word compassionate sales process. So what's the difference between empathy in sales and co compassionate sales process? That empathy with action. This is compassionate sales process. And then to move from that into something called trusted advisory sales, that's empathy slash action, then discipline. So now you know exactly that there will be still a multi-touch point for you to close a deal. There's still going to be different engagement channels. There's still going to be a lot of different things. That's kind of the model of how we can add force to the process. Now, the other arrow that goes down, hopefully our mission today is to help you remove friction, remove obstacles in your sales process. So either you are dialing today as a sales leader who wants to coach and empower his or her sales team, or you're dialing as a sales rep or an inside sales manager, a BDM, a business development manager, and you're trying to accelerate the process. Maybe there are opportunities for optimization, improvement, and integration in your day-to-day -day activity, especially that now you're almost working from home and you're trying to do selling through distance. So the team today are going to share with you some frameworks that we have been using with 100 plus B2B organizations in the US and Canada, uh, working them and helping them to enhance their sales process over the last six years, which now bring me to the next step. John, are you ready to share with the team how can we at least bridge the first part to have the sales and the marketing teams be on the same page and speak the same language? Sure, absolutely, Shehar. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, we can. Lovely, and just uh, for the audience, I might have to turn off my video stream. If I have spotty internet, that's going to improve the quality of the call. Just to let you know, if I disappear, I'm still on the call and talking. It's not Shehar who is trying to impersonate me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we all know, okay, this webinar is focused on removing friction from distant selling. And right across the board, we'll agree that one of the key factors in reducing that friction is actually to get the right quality leads into your pipeline, okay? And ABM that you see on the screen is an acronym for account-based marketing. Many of you might be familiar with that. Uh, so ABM, according to us, especially in these situations when you cannot meet people in trade shows or events, is a very effective way for the sales and marketing team to align their efforts 
to make sure that they're getting quality leads that are not going to get bogged down in their pipeline. Okay. Now, a disclaimer here, ABM is a very broad topic. Uh, we can have a webinar series on ABM, but since that's not the uh, focus of this webinar or this workshop, we want to give you in this, the next few slides, some foundational steps on ABM. That's what we are going to focus on, right? So what is ABM? We are going to show you an infographic on the next slide. Uh, ABM is, let's, let's think about our traditional funnel. So we all know the traditional funnel where it's broad at the top and the focus is to get as many names as possible uh, into the funnel, engage them and hopefully after the sales process, we might get few deals at the bottom, right? So that's how the usual approach is. Now, ABM essentially think about flipping this funnel, right? Now, instead of this broad approach, what we are doing is that we are using very specific messaging and campaigns to target hand-picked decision makers in must-win accounts for our business in the next, let's say, 12 months or 18 months. That's what ABM is right? Very specific. So as I said, we, it's, we, it's called flip your funnel approach. So you approach the decision makers uh, in must win target accounts. You connect with them across multiple channels. You expand within the organization that way, and you engage them across different devices, different channels. And the idea is once they reach the bottom of that funnel, right, they will be at a stage where you can uh, continue with them your usual nurturing process. That is, they can become part of your flywheel. Or let's put it in more simple terms. Make them highly qualified. By the time they're ready to discuss with you, you know that they are highly qualified. They know what value you provide. You know exactly why they are approaching you so that the end result is that their journey through your sales funnel, which be, will be much more smooth and expedited. So that's the target of ABM, right? And some of the steps for ABM is, first one, you got to decide on parameters that you're going to use to select the ideal customer profile or to select the companies you're going to target. Now, this could be based on your previous experience. What did you, which sector did you have most success with? Uh, did that, uh, information change because of COVID, right? Do you have to focus on different sectors or uh, let's say based on the company size or revenue or the roles that have resonated most with you, the decision makers that you've been most successful with or dig deeper. There might be a, a particular production process or a software or a piece of equipment that a company uses where your product or service might be an excellent complement to bring in cost efficiency or operational efficiency, right? So what I'm saying is that you get the point. The parameters used to uh, look at or point out specific targets depends on business to business and it keeps changing. So once you do that with this parameters in your hand, you look at the different markets where you want to expand and target. And then you select, let's say between 20 and 100 accounts, depending upon the resources that you have in your company, right? And once you do that, now you have your uh, ICP and you know exactly what decision makers that you're going to connect. And this is when you go to, into the social media realm and then you use LinkedIn, LinkedIn Sales Navigator, et cetera, to target these people and to make connections with them. Now, how do you make connections? How do you break the ice with these people? We dealt with that in our previous webinar in May, which is in our workshop center. I just... Uh, uh, share the link with you on the chat panel. Okay, so ch check that out. There'll be more details about that. So you connect with them, right? And then you move on to the next stage. So uh, in the next slide, we're going to talk about how you actually approach ABM. Now, when I say next, it doesn't mean that, okay, you wait till you connect and then you plan your strategy. All these are parallel swim lanes, okay? And you need to have, them, have this in place as you go out and start connecting with people. So, ABM, we are not talking about one email campaign or one webinar, okay? We are talking about a multi-touch campaign here with the steps feeding off each other in an orderly fashion. And the key is not to diffuse your message, but focus on one tangible benefit that you know is going to attract attention. And how do we do that? Like, for example, let's say in the next step, right? Let's say 
uh, you run a, a one-stop uh, machining shop, right? And uh, you've been doing it for 30, 40 years, and you have met a lot of complex design requirements, uh, you know, in a manufacturing process. And you, as the founder, feels that uh, your experience, expertise, and your design consultation is the strength that you bring to the table for a client. And that's the way you enhance the effectiveness of the client's design team. Let's say that's your value proposition. So that is the exact point or message around which you have to design your ABM campaign. Or let's say you're in biotechnology and you have a proprietary, uh, let's say drug design platform, right? And uh, this is way better than the, than the current alternatives. Uh, it reduces the operational cost, reduces the steps, uh, it, it reduces the time to market and it increases success rates, right? And if you, and you also provide the complete uh, consultation and expertise around with your, like, along with your proprietary platform. So if this is your expertise, that's what you need to focus on. You get the point. So depending on your industry, you select them. The first step could be an email campaign that you run to these targets. And the email campaign should provide them an offer, a specific content. And the content could be an ebook. It could be a, a, a video graphic or a graphic or a video or some kind of an infographic that's going to give them or make them aware of the solution that you can provide and the benefits that other businesses in the same sector are reaping because of your product, right? So this is the awareness stage. And uh, once you do this, you should also, since you have connected with them on social media, so you should be going out and targeting them with LinkedIn ads, sharing this content with them and uh, sharing this on social media. If possible, if you have a connection with them already, share this in person with them. And once you do all this, in fact, LinkedIn ads or Google ads, you can be very targeted and focus uh, on these decision makers, right? You know, with your targeted ads, with this content. And once you do this, you also need to instruct your sales team to go and check out the profiles of these decision makers on LinkedIn. And when you do that, LinkedIn is going to send them uh, the notification that, hey, this person checked you out and they have received an email from you or a LinkedIn message with a specific content. So you increase the chances of them going through the content and actually being interested in your sales executive and your company, all right? And the next step could be after this, uh, you invite them to a virtual show and tell. So what you're doing here is that you're going a little deeper and uh, that could be a link and they come to a landing page and there are various ways by which you can invite them. This could be a webinar, the event or a podcast or a recorded event where you're going to dig deeper into the best practices in their specific sectors and how your product or service is enhancing the adoption of these best practices uh, to their competition or to the fellow businesses in the same sector and how they're reaping the benefits, cost efficiency or operational efficiency or how they're boosting their revenue because of this, right? And once this is over, the next step could be uh, you run two separate email campaigns to those who attended and to those who didn't attend. To those who attended could be like an email thanking them and inviting them for a meeting with you or inviting them to check out uh, like an online interactive tool where they could uh, type in their specifications and get an exact picture of how your product or service is going to benefit them. What are the cost savings they're going to get? Or uh, you can get creative with ABM. You can send out a, uh, you know, physical mail, a specific mail, thanking them for that, attaching a brochure and requesting a meeting or tell them if, if they have been impressed with what they have seen so far, if someone else could benefit better, asking them for an introduction to that person. So you get the idea. So this is high level. There are multiple steps you can do. And once you have done all this, you also need to make sure that your website is optimized to provide value for these people when they come to your website, right? So you should have specific pillar pages that is going to address this sector from which these decision makers are coming and you should have cluster topics, content, where they come in and they'll be able to gain more value in addition to what you provided them in the previous steps. And also make sure that as a final step, you have interactive tools, online engagement tools, conversational marketing strategy, and chatbots that are empowered with pre-programmed playbooks on these pillar pages so that 
what little time you get with these decision makers, right? It might be 12 seconds, 30 seconds, 90 seconds that you don't allow them to do all the hard work, but your chatbots and conversational marketing serves as a concierge and prompts them to take that next action, goads them to you know, connect with you, uh, have a meeting with you or download that ebook or whatever it is. So you maximize the conversion rate, right? So that's a very high level approach to strategic approach to ABM. If you want to talk in more details, you can uh, you know, uh, connect with us anytime. We'll give you examples of how we have run this in different markets and different sectors. Now, uh, ABM tools needed, these are the must haves. Number one, LinkedIn and uh, LinkedIn Sales Navigator to target accounts, to target decision makers, to connect with them, to keep track. This is very critical. The two other tools that are critical must haves is one is a robust CRM and a marketing automation, right? Now, CRM, a quick fact check for you people, for sales leaders. CRM, a lot of businesses have CRM these days, but unfortunately, the internal adoption rate is very low. It's hovering around 26 to 28%. That's not good enough. If you're not seeing, say, sales increase by 29% or forecasting efficiency improving by like around 35 to 40%, that means adoption rate is low or there's some problem in your sales process, right? So as a sales leader, go back and think about why is this adoption low? Why is this happening? And there could be many factors, right? It could be, is it a change management problem, right? Haven't you introduced this properly to your sales team? Or is your CRM, uh, uh, you know, being a, is a device agnostic? Is it mobile enough? for your team to use it anywhere or wherever they want to. Or uh, another problem could be, is it able to uh, seamlessly integrate with the other sales tool that your team is using? Is it actually bogging down your, is your sales process actually bogging down your sales executive rather than empowering them? So as a sales leader, you need to check all those boxes to make sure that the CRM adoption is quite high in your organization. Marketing automation, obviously, when you're running an ABM, you need a tool with you to look at all the metrics and track the activities and being able to target these, these individuals or decision makers in a customized fashion. So these are the three must haves. And now the nice to haves will be, uh, the first one is an ABM platform. Of course, all this comes with a price tag, right? That's why these are nice to have. Uh, there are many examples, there's Terminus, uh, there is uh, Engageo, there is uh, Demandbase, even HubSpot, has an ABM uh, component to it, to its marketing hub these days, right? Also, uh, Bombora, it's a, a customer intent data platform. It allows your sales team to realize or to understand when somebody is in a market for a particular product. So very cool too, if you can afford that, that's great to have in your stack. Other than that, uh, you also need to connect uh, in other social media platforms. Of course, LinkedIn is number one, Facebook page, Twitter page, because uh, people use Instagram. If you're in manufacturing, you have a strong production process. You want to highlight that uh, videos and pictures and all that, Instagram can be a like, you know, great platform for you. So uh, these are critical. And also in order to like, you know, tease out the right emails, tools like Zoom Info, Discover All, Lead 411 can be a nice to have. Now, the, co the most important thing for you to realize is, especially for a small uh, SMB, is to choose a platform, if possible, that can provide you with all these capabilities on a single platform, right? The CRM, uh, the marketing automation, being able to run a little bit of ABM and all that on a single platform. And that's why since we cater to SMBs, we, are, uh, we, we, we really like HubSpot because HubSpot is able to tie in all those uh, loose ends and create a nice loop for you to increase uh, transparency in your efforts and also to see exactly what's happening to consolidate all the data onto one platform. So that's the kind of uh, tech stack that you need uh, to improve the lead quality. Now, the final point I want to make here is that the idea is, as you set all this up, to create a hyper-personalized experience to increase, uh, to improve the quality of leads, as well as to increase conversion rates once you, you are attracting eyeballs to your website. So uh, your organic Google display ads, your ABM, your marketing campaign, the idea is you're going to pull in qualified visitors, right? Visitors who are really interested in what you're providing. And from there, hopefully, they will be able to visit the pillar pages right, that you have optimized your website, website for to gain more information, to get more information. So you keep adding value after value on each step. 
And once you do that, you're also engaging them. You're not letting them, hey, okay, this is my website and you can you know, spend as much time as you want, go wherever you want. No, you are with them. You're automating the journey. You are with them as a concierge with your con conversational marketing, with your chat bot, with your workflows, you're providing them value, right? And so you're giving them every opportunity to become that lead for you in your CRM. And once that happens, your marketing automation in the next step is activated. And when the marketing automation is activated, this is when you can start targeting these people who are interested in you. They are already qualified because they're interested, right? So in the next step, you'll see uh, your marketing automation is going to target and the targeting begins. But for those who come to your website and don't go to the pillar pages or take the call to actions that you want them to uh, like, you know, take, there's something that you can do, retarget, retarget them for visitors who came to the pillar pages so that uh, you provide them with more opportunities to spend time with you and to have quality sales conversation, right? So once the marketing automation is activated, targeting begins, and the next step will be you take them through a process of self-education, self-research and evaluation, right? So you will segment your database, you will say according to the personas and you'll have customized workflows and you'll have multi touch points with these prospects and you're going to deliver them product specification, comparison, online tool, uh, whatever it is, right? That you feel uh, uh, what closes the loop for your ABM campaign. And the idea is now to be able to qualify these people according to their behavior and get to the next step, right? So you will know that you are maximizing your sales team by the journey they have taken so far, you know that this lead is highly qualified. It becomes a marketing qualified lead in your organization and marketing qualified, and it's called lead scoring. It's a numerical value. And once that uh, it reaches a particular threshold, now the marketing team will push it on to the sales team. It becomes a sales qualified lead. So your sales team is not running after everybody who's filling a form. They are prioritizing their day based on this lead score and based on the definitions of MQL and SQL. And the final goal of setting all this up is that your sales team can have a very surgical and consultative conversation with this prospect when they're ready to talk. So that's the idea of ABM inbound marketing and uh, uh, I should say the science behind getting more qualified leads to increase deal velocity. So hope that was useful. But now these days we know that yes, having a superb product to back up your sales process is very critical, but these days it's more important how you sell. So at this point, I would like to invite Max to shed some light on what works these days in the sales process. And uh, if you're not doing that now, how you can adapt to that? Max? Oh, well, thank you, John. And uh, you put me on a nice pedestal there, but to be honest, I have no idea what I'm doing and I've just been faking it this whole time. So uh, <laughs> moving on, um, again, great quote um, left, you know, left by John here. Um, both are important, both the how and the what that you sell, but I, before getting into the next slide, I just want the audience here to have a consideration. And wh what do we mean by this? How you sell is more important. We are in a world, whether we like it or not, where the most represented generation in the workforce right now is the millennial generation. They aren't, a lot of them have become decision makers. Most are still in the influencer stage. We are two years away from them being uh, representing over 50% of the workforce. So what do we mean by this? How you sell is more important. You have to constantly customize and pivot your sales strategy to how people like to be sell to. Don't get me wrong. It is important to have a very, you know, a, a very um, good either product or service that solves a problem for them. But at the end of the day, you need to cater to their needs. So going into this, we, we want to deep dive actually and find out you know, what, what are some of the challenges right now. So we actually talk to every single customer that we work with, uh, talk to mostly VPs of sales and ask, what are some of the challenges that they're facing? We came up with, they came to us with, uh, with a lot, but there's four that, were, um, that a lot shared and we're, we want to share them with you today. 
So number one, securing current deals and resetting goals. Yeah, very, very topical, especially during the era of COVID-19 right now. Uh, suddenly sales plans and forecasts that were relevant, um, you know, at, in January and February, suddenly those have changed. And um, a lot of sales leaders have already done this, but we're gonna go a little bit deeper. Uh, uncertainty in the market. Yeah, who knows where our businesses are gonna be, um, whether, you know, the economy opens up again uh, to where it was, uh, how we're going to be positioned, uh, what, what, new, what new go to market strategies are going to be out there. Again, a lot of, a lot of considerations. Prospecting, big one right now, um, especially for outside sales reps. They were using you know, trade shows, networking events, um, those sorts of activities to, to prospect and to uh, really build the, the early parts of their, of their pipeline and, and fill them now suddenly those are, you know, those, those are no longer a thing anymore. So inside, or pardon me, outside sales reps now need to adopt the mantra of an inside sales rep and start doing those activities because in this current climate, inside sales reps are better positioned. So we'll go again, get to that a little bit later. Reallocation of internal re resources. Right now, um, sales leaders had, had budgets, um, Potentially, maybe they've, they've been cut, but they need to reallocate them because a lot of them were being allocated towards things like, like trade shows, right? Uh, for travel, for setting up a booth, for hotels, for you know, whatever employees are coming with them. Suddenly, you know, trade shows are no longer going to be a thing for, for the foreseeable future. So how do we pivot? And do we take that money and we spend it, do we spend it elsewhere? elsewhere? Well, the answer we're going to tell you is yes. And we'll, we'll get to a few strategies on what you can utilize. So again, we have some familiar faces here um, and a lot of sales leaders. Um, if, if we're missing anything on this slide, please, at any point, put them in this, in this chat. What, what challenges are you facing right now? Max, so, uh, yeah, go just ahead, John. a quick point. I just remember that and before you go on to the next slide, we talked about ABM. ABM is not just about uh, targeting accounts or net new names. If you want to expand your channel strategy, ha have additional dealers or your dealer network, right? And you can use ABM to target dealers, expand your channel strategy, or bring in new partners who can be that uh, sales team for you if you don't want to expand your sales team internally. So ABM can be approached, uh, used even for target accounts as well as to target uh, like a, a channel strategy for manufacturing or for any sector. Thanks, Max. Of course, yeah. It's a, a very, very powerful tool uh, or strategy, I should say, to, to implement right now, ABM. It's, it seems to be working very well for us. So, so we have four challenges here. And the, the nice part about them is the solutions um, or strategies that really that um, that address these challenges fit nicely into two buckets: adding force and reducing friction. So we ask these sales leaders again: where where do you need the most help right now? Is it on the adding force side of things, or is it reducing friction in the existing sales processes? And we actually got a very lopsided answer that kind of surprised us. So here was the split. So 81% said add force and 19% said reducing friction. Now, the topic of this webinar is how do, you, how do we reduce friction? So that 19% is nothing to scoff, scoff at, right? That is 20% that is of sales leaders. And again, it wasn't like one or the other, it was which, where's the priority? So a lot of sales leaders out there need help reducing friction. So we're actually gonna address both on the next slide. So here, starting with adding force, here are the few of the strategies that we suggest implementing uh, to help move the flywheel. Again, the faster the flywheel moves by adding force, the more results. So a couple things, I'll read them to you. 2020 capacity and territory planning. Yep, that's, that's a huge one. Um, territory plans um, and quotas have probably been adjusted at this point. And you have to reevaluate sales pipelines and prospects and existing customers and find out who is more like most likely to do business with us right now, right? Sales customer service account expansion strategy, again, hand in hand with the, with the previous point, but again, focusing on the prospect side, right? Who isn't a customer right now, but I, 
we can still target and pot potentially facilitate business with. Moving on, getting outbound reps to adapt to selling through distance, right? So as I said a couple slides slides ago, inbound reps are better positioned right now because they have been used to used to selling through distance right now. So adopting the inbound uh, sales rep strategy and getting coaching from them is going to be paramount for outbound reps to still be effective in this climate. Rolling out a new demo, uh, video conferencing is huge right now. Um, you know, looking at some of the industries and individuals who are on this call right now, we have people in print, we have IT. Um, naturally, part of your sales process was probably demoing a device, demoing a solution. Um, while the in-person demo is no longer a thing, you can still do that over video recording. So that's what we suggest you do. Uh, focus on increasing uh, average customer value. We all know that it is way cheaper and way faster to sell to an existing customer than it is to acquire a net new customer. So again, focus on some of those quick transactional deals while also going back to point two and look at your account expansion strategy. Targeting companies driven to make a change right now. This one's huge and I'm sure a lot of you are doing it, um, but regardless, we we put it out there, it is, it is paramount to be focusing on the business leaders that align well with your value proposition and are more inclined to do a, uh, to make a decision. Again, there's, uh, regarding COVID right now, there's government assistant programs right now, uh, programs for businesses um, that, that they're utilizing right now. Now business leaders we're finding are slowly uh, making more decisions are and are likely to spend their dollars. Focus on those instead of the ones who are just trying to weather the storm. And lastly, on the ad for side, doing more activities, uh, webinars, targeted emails. Again, these are all extremely important things. The more activities, the more success uh, is, is what we're finding. So again, a very important way to add force. Now, on the other side, reducing friction what do we do so coaching is a huge one so here actually has a great point about it a little bit later on but managers need to coach their reps push them to be better and teach them something new this week because again there is i highly doubt that pre-march 2020 there was a a sales rep handbook that said how to coach uh, how to sell during a global pandemic right so pivot your strategy help your sales uh, repo and change up the sales process as needed to reduce friction. Focus on sales productivity. So start, start tracking their activities. We're gonna show you a little bit later on how to do that and find out where they're finding the most success right now, what is increasing deal velocity and focus on those areas in your sales process. Focusing energy on the right types of accounts uh, in uh, ideal customer profile. So again, about, if this goes back, uh, this goes hand in hand with what's in ad force. Focus on what deals are in your pipeline right now, uh, both in prospects, uh, in your prospect pipeline and your current accounts pipeline and determine who's our ideal customer profile, who can we still sell to in this market. And lastly, remove sales friction. So anything that you see that is bottlenecking your sales process, uh, address it and see what you can do to increase deal velocity. So from there, I think I'll pass it on to uh, Sahar who will uh, take it from here. Thank you, Max. And thank you, John. I think uh, so far, I want to thank everybody today. I know Max and John, both of them did a great job in sharing a lot of information. First, we started by saying we are suggesting for all sales organization in US and Canada, to focus on a new framework, which is the flywheel framework. And then John started by introducing a sample program called account-based marketing that can be applied for your organization when it comes to sales and marketing alignment, but it's actually a targeted marketing engine versus a traditional marketing engine. And then from there, he explained hyper, hyper campaign and how it works. Then he handed over to Max and Max start sharing from a high level perspective, a sample tactics on what does it mean to remove uh, friction and apply force. Now, in the next part of our session here, I'll ask everybody now on the call to just step back. I want everybody to breathe 
And uh, make sure again, use the Q&A before we go to the next part of our section. I'm going to share with you what we have learned at a Flawless and Bound team when we have worked with 100 plus B2B organization in US and Canada. So the first thing we learned is the following. First, when we asked the sales leader, when you speak about efficiency with your sales team and sales department, can you give us a percentage of how you feel your sales team are using their day? The feedback was 33% of sales rep time is actually spent selling. To me, as part of Flawless and Bound or as a sales leader myself, that's an alarming number. Now more than ever, because if you know that you have an amazing sales team and their gift is to connect with clients and they only use 33% of their time, that's a big problem. Then we ask them, have you guys uh, evaluated your prospects? How did you feel about the sales process? We find that 60% of B2B buyers, remember buyers are your customers, your prospects, right? They're saying that they, they feel that trust maybe is not there as they hoped in the sales process. To me now as a sales leader, this means that maybe we are using a very traditional sales playbook that kind of didn't pass through time and testing. We all know right now that the buyers have their own process and with the current condition, everybody is competing for attention. So if the buyer now is saying that they didn't feel trust in the sales process, this means that we as sales leader or as sales rep who are uh, uh, tasked with growth in the organization, we need to go back and visit our sales playbook. Then the final thing is when we ask sales leaders in the organization, how do you guys or girls feel about coaching your team? How much are you coaching their, your team? They said, we feel that 50% of our time during sales forecasting, we're actually coaching our team. We're not just doing forecasting. Then we, we went and asked the sales rep. They said, now it seems that's not, not there. There's discrepancy, right? The sales rep are saying it's only 50% of our time we get coaching versus the sales managers are saying it's 82% of our time. I think, I'm, I apologize. I, I changed the matrix here. So this means what? This means that there's a little bit of disconnect between the sales leader and his or her sales team. So with that in mind, what the Flawless and Bound did almost six years ago is we came with a new framework that I would humbly advise all organizations on the call right now to start evaluating and adjusting in their department. It's called the EAT model. And listen, I know we're having this session during lunchtime, especially for people in Alberta and BC, but uh, it's kind of a nice reminder that uh, you wanna enable, you wanna feed your organization, and you wanna bring your organization back to operation and growth. EAT stands for enable, align, and transform. How can you, as a sales leader, enable your sales team to spend more time doing what they do best, align. How can you align sales and marketing inside the organization? That's one aspect, but more importantly, how can you align your sales playbook to match the new buyer's journey? Transform. Now if we're able to enable, align, how can we integrate this and optimize it with the rest of the organization as well? And how can we have a better sales culture so that during this interesting time and eventually when the market comes back, we will be ready as a sales organization to bounce back. So with that in mind, um, what we're going to do is I'm going to share with you uh, frameworks, two frameworks actually, that, or two tactics uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, that will help you with that. The first one is, and this is again, us learning of working with a lot of sales organization, is how can I simplify, let's say I'm a sales rep. I'm not a sales leader, I'm a sales rep. I, I woke up in the morning, I connect with my teams or I connect with my prospect. What should I do each and every day? So what I did is I created, we created actually a, a dashboard. I'm going to show it to you right now that actually have usually nine steps that a sales rep each day in the morning they do, not in the morning, all day actually. Now in this nine steps, think about it as a sales rep right now. I just want you to reflect on that. You start first, you bring your coffee or your tea, you start planning your day, you start researching for new leads, prospecting. We find this is the hardest part of the sales process. 
Then you start figuring out how you do follow-up emails, qualifying leads, you guys got the idea. Now, what we also have seen, which is more important, is what's the time, uh, time percentage of distribution that you have on those nine tasks? And then we did some evaluation to know how many tools your sales rep or yourself are using each and every day. And then we start tagging them with friction. Because listen, each time you use a tool, sometimes it can confuse you or distract you of what you do best, which is connect with clients. So your mission, if you choose to accept it, either as a sales rep or as a sales leader, is to remove friction. So our hope, we're going to share with you how we can do that, but our hope when you remove that friction, the KPIs that you have to measure to make sure that you actually remove friction is the following. First, if you did this right for your team, the time to complete a task, I'm not saying close a deal, I'm saying complete a task with your sales rep should be reduced. Second, the percentage of time that your sales rep or you as a sales rep spend more telling the story to your prospect should increase because now you're not bombarded by useless tools that you hate to use each and every day, but you have to use them because of reporting. Third, if we've done the first two KPIs properly, the third KPI, which is quota attain attainment, is a byproduct of the first two aspects. So before I hand it off to Max and John to quickly show you guys what do we mean by that, I want you to expect the following, that I'm saying, how can I have you have a proper day, have proper tasks in place, when you open your system, you know exactly what you're doing and who you're going to follow up with. How can you automate things? How you can uh, you know, do some kind of uh, applying scaling in some of the sales process. So Max and John, are you ready to quickly uh, show the audience today how can we remove some of the friction as sales rep in our, in our day to day? Let's do this. So some flawless pro tips for you all. Uh, Keep in mind, this is to simplify a sales rep's day. So use sales tasks. So what do I mean by this? Uh, quickly before explaining what sales tasks are, we, our last webinar, or it was more of a workshop in May, we go into great detail about all the tools that John and I are going to present here. So we're going to just kind of give a high level overview about them. Uh, if you want to see these tools in greater detail, just reach out to one of us and we'll be happy to provide you with that workshop. So use sales tasks. What's sales tasks? So we all have one of these, don't we? Smartphone. Hopefully you do. Um, what sales tasks is, is like the smartphone, which can remind you on things. You can put, cal you know, you can put calendar events in that, that trigger a, a reminder. You can apply that. What HubSpot does and a lot of sales automation tools is they apply that to sales tasks. So for instance, as you can see here, there's reminders for phone calls. There's reminders for emails. You can put meeting reminders, absolutely anything. It's fully customizable. You can associate them. So again, if you have these people in your CRM, you can associate the call with them. So then their phone number automatically pops off. All of that is available for you. And you can set the time that it happens at as well. So again, it could be tomorrow. These, these are all set up for tasks tomorrow. You can set them up weeks from now, months from now. Again, maybe it's a, maybe it's a task that's not important, but it's time sensitive. So you want to put that on um, a specific day and time where a prospect said, hey, reach out to me then. That's, that's what you use this feature for. So again, super nice feature, allows you to really take control of your day and easily remind you on like what you need to accomplish before the day is done. Build a task workflow. So this goes hand in hand with the last one. So it can be a little bit cumbersome to navigate from task to task and uh, decide, you know, does this work for me? Does it, doesn't it? Oh gosh, you know, something came up in my day and I need to go revisit my task. What task workflow is, is a really nice feature that allows you to, once, it, once you've completed one task, it automatically brings you to the next one in your, in your calendar. So whatever, whatever task you've set up next, it brings you to that so that you can complete that, whether it's an email, whether it's a phone call. Once that is done, again, the sequence continues and it brings you, it brings you along. It's a quicker, more efficient way to complete tasks and doesn't, doesn't, uh, make, you know, doesn't cause all the confusion of navigating back and forth from contact information back to your task queue. So again, all of that is, is available through a task workflow. 
Leverage the Playbooks tool. So here's a really amazing feature available on HubSpot Sales Enterprise. And the playbook, I just want you to think of it as a live document. So it allows you to upload your personalized sales scripts customized to industries, net new customers, ideal customer profile of me, like CEOs, VPs. And the beauty of that is that sales managers now, or sales user, um, reps, account managers, whoever you might be utilizing this now can start taking segments from the playbook and applying it to maybe their, their phone calls, maybe to their emails. And on the back end now, a manager or a VP of sales can now see how effective was that, was that script? Uh, did the rep omit this, this part of the script? Did they add this? Uh, oh, we see, you know, point number three here about sales and marketing processes and current technology isn't working as effectively. Let's, let's go back to the, to the boardroom table here and decide how we're going to do that better so that this script is more effective. All of that is tracked and it produces reports, which are extremely, extremely effective, uh, especially at the at, at a high sales level for, uh, for reporting purposes. So again, you can go extremely deep into how effective the playbook tool is and constantly pivot and adjust and optimize as needed. So as I said, very much a live document that is ongoing and constantly giving you analytics. And advanced sequences. John, let me pass it over to you for this one. Thank you for waking me up, Max. <laughs> so, <laughs> since we are talking about uh, empowering sales rep, making the day easier, this is a tool that you need to be utilizing with your sales team. Uh, we know the focus of the sales team should be on high value deals, deals that are deep in your pipeline that are close to closing, but your marketing team is making an effort. We talked about ABM. So that means there are going to be visitors who are interested in learning more from you, gathering more information, and they shouldn't be left to deal with their research on their own. This is when uh, the sales team should be able to uh, involve them without spending too much time on them till they are at a stage where they can have that first conversation with you. So what you're doing is that you're empowering a sales team through this advanced sequences feature that we use. And what this does is the sales team can set up its own template and customize its own sequences and they can bulk enroll contacts who are not yet ready to have a detailed sales consultation with your sales team, right? And not just that, uh, you can enroll about 50 contacts at a time. Also, uh, you can set up multiple steps in this approach and uh, you can also customize it. Sales teams, Sometimes their day doesn't go according to plan. They get called into a meeting. They're discussing with their sales manager on a discount to get a proposal across the line. So there's a possibility that they might not be able to physically pick up the uh, phone and call uh, this prospect after the first step. So you can uh, customize, right? Uh, basically, uh, you can pause the sequence uh, based on completion rates. And you have all those options. You can create send limits, right? Uh, as, as you see in the screen here, you can make those choices to make sure that you give your sales rep a piece of time. At the same time, you are dealing with every prospect who's interested in talking to you and who consider you important enough to give their contact information. So advanced sequences, make sure that your sales team can prioritize their selling time at the same time, take care of everyone right across their pipeline. And with that, I guess we move into step two here. And I hand it back to Seher. Thank you, John. Thank you, Max. So the second step is, remember, we're trying to add force, remove friction. So in this second model, we understand that almost 90% of sales rep attending the call today, almost 90% are actually B2B organizations. So what does this mean? I want to introduce you to the model called swim lanes. And this is just a high level, high level, approach of what swim lanes is. Usually when you are in a sales process, either you're sending hardware, software service, or a piece of machinery, or a professional service, and if your contract value is kind of with a little bit of a higher price tag, usually we're going to deal with an organization where a committee is going to agree or consult internally before signing on the dotted line of your contract. So my 
I advise everyone today to understand that they are different swim lanes. Maybe you have a decision maker, the champion, the influencer, and the budget holder. Why I'm advising that? Because what we have seen with a lot of sales organizations that we have coached and worked with before is that maybe they have one or two sales scripts that they use all the time, and they're wondering why their close rate is 5%. So what I'm advising is the following, that when you start building your sales script, there will be different swim lanes and different stages of swim lanes in your sales script. So I will not go into details, but I want everybody to reflect on that to understand what does it mean. When I'm trying to send an email to a, a budget holder, it's different than decision maker or influencer. So Max and John, now understanding that we have different swim lanes, to me, this means we need different conversation points and we need different personalization. Can you show the team, how can we apply that understanding that we're dealing with different persona during the sales process? Do, do we have a choice to her? No, you don't. <laughs> All right, well, quickly do you want to talk, touch base on the KPIs that... Uh, let, me, let me touch base on that. Thank okay. You. So can, you see, you, know, you have a choice. <laughs> so hey, I'm wondering if HubSpot can automate my, my coffee making process in the morning. <laughs> maybe they're working on it. <laughs> so good point. I forgot to mention that. Actually, our hope when you apply the proper swim lane and the proper script per swim lane, the hope as a sales leader or even as a sales rep is that you should see that your close rate over time increase. We spoke about selling velocity before. That should increase even during that time. And the final thing that I might advise everybody joining the call today is just an idea. Take it back to your organization and see if it works or not. How about you actually survey your prospect so that they can give you a feedback on your sales process? See, when we speak about MPS scores, we always speak about existing customers. We want to make sure they're happy and nothing wrong with that. But if you truly need the feedback on your sales process, why don't you ask your prospects? Not only prospect that you're able to win, but maybe prospect that they disconnected from you, ask them, not why did I lose the sales, but how do you feel overall experience with the sales process of my organization? With that in mind, Max and John, are you ready now? I think so. Okay. Um, so, Flawless Pro Tips, version two. Uh, again, keep in mind, this is regarding the framework of ruthlessly prioritized for your buyer. So, chatbots. John already really talked about this, but chatbots are an extremely important concierge that is always available maybe when a salesperson isn't. So someone is coming to your website, they've, they've decided they're, they're in the consideration phase, they wanna get more information about Flawless and Bound, they wanna get maybe specific to your industry, they wanna get more information about print, more information about IT services. So what do they do? They engage with your chatbot. Now, don't, no, no one in the world is fooled by this. They don't think Elise is actually talking to them. They know it's a bot. However, the chatbot does two really important things uh, if programmed properly. It can, it can determine whether it's an existing customer or a prospect uh, visiting the page. And it can ask really important qualification questions on what industry they are in, what role they are in, what they're interested in before step number two, which is extremely important, escalating that to a live salesperson, right? So taking, uh, getting all that information, passing it over so that the sales rep who takes over from the chat bot is knowledgeable and can answer their questions. So again, important, um, really important tool. And furthermore, maybe if a salesperson isn't available, the chatbot can be programmed in a way where it will set up next steps where it'll say maybe a salesperson will call you, maybe, hey, expect an email from us uh, in, a, in a couple hours notice. All of that can be pre-programmed. So again, super important because a bot doesn't have to sleep like a salesperson does. Snippets and templates, we talked about this in our May webinar, but again, um, what's important to consider is it is time consuming to write a perfect prospecting email that warrants a response. People, you know, business people and decision makers are well aware the, of uh, email blasts, right? They know when they're receiving one that's not, you know, maybe has some customization, no customization, 
and they know that, oh, maybe I, this doesn't warrant a response. So in order to facilitate a response, you have to be far more strategic. You have to, you have to lead with um, something that you know, connects the two of you and furthermore, put really hyper customize it. So that takes a lot of time, right? A sale, you know, we only have usually eight or nine hours in our, in our business day where we're working, where we're, we're selling. So how do we speed up that process? We use snippets and templates. So an email template, again, exactly how it sounds, already pre-written, uh, you implement some customization so that shows their name and, and connects them. Snippet is a little bit more detailed than that. And a snippet allows you to add paragraphs or maybe a couple of sentences, a couple points, maybe a few links that are relevant to the person that you're trying to sell to, to the prospect that you're trying to sell to. So then again, it speeds up that process. Then you don't have to go back, search your website, search the internet to find these relevant links that you, that you want them to click. And you can automatically put them in a snippet as long as you program that in the past. So again, really speeds up the rate that you can put together that perfect prospecting email and send it off uh, and hopefully facilitate some healthy discussion and take that person across the buyer's journey to all the way to an exploratory meeting. Meeting links. John, you want to talk about this one? Because it is your sure. meeting link after all. Absolutely. And we've all seen that, you know, without being able to provide this option, it's always back and forth email. Someone wants to talk to you, but then you take them through a cycle of three or four other emails to get a time on their calendar, right? That's a very inefficient process. And this should be being able to uh, strike it when it's hot, right? When they're reading your content, when they're impressed by it, and they are in the zone, in the moment, that's when they need to be able to connect to you. It could be through a conversational chatbot, or it could be a link that you provide uh, in your email, right? So that's what this meeting link does. And it makes sure that there's no confusion or even in your outbound approach, you can use this on LinkedIn, use this in your uh, uh, email templates, outbound email templates. By the way, we discussed a very good effective template for outbound. Uh, that's, uh, we discussed that in a previous webinar in May. It's called the 4T model, check that out. So the, the more opportunities you give these prospects to connect with you the way they want, that's going to increase your conversion rates and the chance of you having quality conversations with them. And the, the meeting links, it's not just, uh, you can design your meeting links for different services that you provide within your organization for, for consulting or uh, for like, you know, for some other uh, pr process for, for a marketing strategy, or if you have partners or distributors that you work with, right? You can have separate, generate separate meeting links for clients or prospects or for partners or your dealer network. So there's a lot of opportunity and the ability is to be able to provide the prospect uh, the, the chance to connect with you and look at your calendar without having to wait for that response from you. It uh, drastically increases, dramatically increases the rate of meetings that you can book with the prospects that you're targeting. And I guess with that, we come to the end of this and we're going to wrap it up with a summary. Beautiful. Uh, let's say how do that. Thank you, John. Thank you, Max. So quickly here, uh, just from a summary perspective, we spoke about a lot of things today, but actually I'm going to announce a big thing that Flawless and Bound actually will be doing. I'm going to be running a sales uh, bootcamp. This is not for anybody here on the call today, maybe it's not, but this is mainly for people who, uh, you know, want to just go deeper onto how we do things. We did help a lot of organizations before in uh, the model of building a sales process. We usually run sales bootcamp. Usually it's around $6,000, a one day bootcamp. I'm not suggesting this for people who never work with Follows and Bound before because we only position those boot camps, only position them if we know the organization, we know the culture of the team, we met the sales team before, and maybe we run some kind of marketing for them so we understand products and services. So Max, what I'm going to do right now, if you can stop sharing for a second, I wanna sh just share with the team like how we do our digital boot camps. Uh, you would see in the link here that we have um, uh, a three days boot camp where I'm going to be personally running this boot camp with the sales team. So this is kind of we have a three days session. It will be hosted on uh, three consecutive days. That will be June 23rd, 24th, and 25th. 
what usually we do in those boot camps, usually, if it's pre-COVID, if you guys can see my video, we usually invite those teams to come during lunchtime, and then we do some kind of training in the boardroom here. Uh, so because of the situation, because everything that's going on, we're still going to host this kind of training still in the boardroom, but then what we're going to do is we're going to make it all virtual through Zoom. Those will kind of help you guys build the foundation of a sales process. Uh, just to make sure that we're preparing you guys for how the foundation of how to sell through this things. Uh, it's going to be during lunchtime, uh, uh, the 23rd, 24th, and 25th uh, for one hour. And then after that, you'll have a personal kind of, you know, uh, just session with me, kind of just to review your process. The, I would suggest that for organizations who have never worked with us before. So at least you have a foundation of kind of building your own sales process. We'll be doing a lot of whiteboarding in this session. Uh, you guys will be having homework to do. There will be dry runs and things like that. Max, can you share the agenda quickly of what we're planning in this, uh, uh, in this kind of digital workshop? Yep, you sh I sure can. I think it's on the next slide. So, so that's that, yeah. There, there it is, June 23rd, 24th, and 25th. There's the, the price of it. And here is so what the, you'll be seeing. So in this agenda, you guys can see, it's actually applying exactly the framework that we're using and we have used for 100 plus B2B organization. Day one will speak about enablement. And one of the key focus in day one would be around building the sales uh, frameworks itself from a high level perspective. Day two will be alignment and it's one hour each. Uh, and in and, and this kind of day two, we'll go deeper into swim lanes. We, we shared swim lanes with you guys. Day three will be more about transformation and how we can do the integration optimization. And of course, in day three, we will focus deeper on objection handling. Again, um, if you are an organization who worked with us before, some of you guys know some of that already. So I will not suggest that for organizations who work with us before. We have the deeper workshop, uh, especially for organizations like this. This is mainly for organizations never worked with us before, and they want to build their own sales process. And of course, during COVID, everybody's working online. So, so we're kind of su suggesting that you guys look at that and see if there's any value with that as well. Yeah, also, in the beginning of our session, we shared our recording of all the other webinars so that you guys can review them as well and get more knowledge from them. Sorry, John, you want to say? You no, I something? just want to say, say I like that uh, B in on under June 24, the swim lane model, and we are seeing that being so effective during COVID. So is that something that you added before in the workshops or is that a new addition? We, we just kind of usually like to, to do it uh, this way. We know that during COVID, that's the time when organizations get more trained to okay. be ready. So that's kind of how we would, uh, we would kind of do something like that. Okay. okay. Awesome. Max, back to you. All right. And uh, one quick question, Seher. Uh, yeah. I'm wondering, people might be wondering, what if they have uh, different kinds of CRMs, right? Tech stack. All this we are talking about, we, how applicable is it ac according to the tech stack they have currently? So first of all, uh, we've worked with a lot of organizations who either have HubSpot or have Microsoft Dynamics or have SFDC, Salesforce, and others. Um, and it, we're speaking about the framework itself. So the technology is irrelevant. It's the, the pen that you, you write your script on. Uh, having said that, the workshop that we're suggesting, a digital workshop, it's also technology agnostic. This is not about how to program your CRM. Having said that, in the deeper one day full workshop, we will go deeper into looking at a sales process for an organization. Usually what I do is I go in, visit the organization, have the VP of sales and have all the sales rep in the room. And we spend like six, seven hours. Uh, this is kind of more of a deeper engagement that we work with the organization. But again, for audience here today, you don't need to have HubSpot to yeah. build the sales process. Because I see in manufacturing, you use a lot of pipe drive. Correct. Like a lot of software companies use Microsoft awesome. Dynamics and all that. So, okay, thanks for clarifying that. No worries, good question. All right, well, thank you everyone who's still with us. Just the last kind of call to action. John, Sahara, and myself are extremely active on LinkedIn. We encourage you to follow our Flawless and Bound uh, business page for any updates uh, regarding webinars, workshops that we're putting on. We also post uh, all our blogs and relevant links on there. Uh, I wrote a sales focused blog uh, about a month ago. I hear it's nominated for a Pulitzer, so maybe you guys can check that out, but just kidding, it definitely isn't. Uh, last thing, just a couple of our accolades. As we said, 
We've helped hundreds of Canadian U.S. organizations with their sales and marketing strategies and ex executions. We're HubSpot Platinum Partner and the Hub on the HubSpot part uh, Partner Advisory Board. We're one of 20 companies in the world uh, on that. Sahara published a book, the Marketing Manager Journey to Summit, uh, on B2B marketing. If you'd like a copy of that, please get in touch with us and we'd be happy to, uh, to direct you to it. And we have operations in Alberta, BC, and hopefully soon we'll see how, how the world economy kind of recovers here, but the United States, that was- We were almost there. there, but we got derailed by this pandemic, right? Yeah. <laughs> and there is the team. We are real people. <laughs> That brings us to the end. One thing I'll say to everyone who's still on the call uh, regarding the sales training is Sahar is, if you don't know us about him, he's extremely acrobatic and um, <laughs> don't let him off the hook on day three. He said he'd teach everyone how to do a backflip. Um, that was actually part of the hiring process for John and I. We had to, we had to learn how to do a backflip do it in the flaws and bound boardroom and then uh, and then we got the job so ensure he teaches you how to do that because the best way to 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 win to celebrate winning a deal is by doing a backflip back so exactly we will <laughs> open the floor now to some questions uh thank you all who are still yeah, as we wait for now. questions here one note i would need to add is now is not the time to be freelancing because there are many companies that were comfortable by bringing in uh, uh, you know, like experienced people and they go and do their own stuff. They meet, they go for trade shows, go out for golfing, tennis, take them out for lunch. Things have changed these days. Right. And for you to make sure that what you're investing in is making sense for your business, you need to have a well-defined sales framework, a sales process and tools to measure whatever you invest in. And if you don't do that, whatever you do this now, six months down the line, 12 months down the line, you're looking at, okay, what did this bring us? and it will feel like a loss to you. So what we are sharing now are tactics, but you would have noticed the, the theme behind it is to not just you know, add uh, dollars to it and buy a fancy tool, but have a framework, a process, and metrics that you can measure and keep track. And, uh, and uh, just to add to that, John, uh, just for people on the call here, we're still monitoring the chat uh, and, and the Q&A if you guys have more questions for us. But, um, just we have worked with a lot of organizations before uh, um, and you know we, we consulted we worked with cisco systems uh inc 100 companies microsoft channel partners uh biotech um you know uh, real estate construction um manufacturing and so on and we learn a lot from them and and one of the key things we learn is that they do have a process and they do have a system but the problem is that maybe it didn't pass the taste, taste of time also, they have amazing sales teams, but just you need to optimization to the script uh, to, to match what's going on today. And then the final thing is not all of us were ready really to do sales selling through distance. So somehow there is a little bit of optimization integration that needs to happen. That's why we came with this kind of a digital light um, uh, boot camp to enable the organization to do that at that time so that when the markets start coming back, then the sales team are ready. To, to take the organization back to hopefully growth and prosperity as well. But again, we're, we're monitoring. Uh, if you guys have any questions for us on the chat, in the q and I, I think we, we kind of answered all the questions and there was some engagement yeah. in the beginning. So Max and John, back to you. Yeah, and the key thing is just one last point I want to add is this kind of alleviates the problem that churn brings in an organization, right? People come in, they learn the process, and when they go away, they take away the, the book of business with them, their own style with them and all that. This is about flipping the script, right? Uh, asking people to, yes, still add their own style, but to the basic foundation that you have in place that's been working for you. And so the learning curve uh, will be a lot shorter and you can be more confident that you can deal with churn better. Absolutely. Max, John, thank you guys for the time today. Really appreciate it. Everybody on the call, thank you so much. Uh, of course, you guys will get the follow-up and the recording. Also, check our website because all the previous webinars, you should see it also in the Knowledge Center on our website. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. Thanks to everyone. Yeah, have a nice rest of the day and see you on the next workshop next month.